Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners. You can watch and download this program this is a and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar or choose my name, John Letts. You can see this program on Channel 15 in Ashland and Channel 182 on Charter Cable. That's where you can watch it at 8 o'clock on Monday mornings and 7 o'clock on Thursday evenings. This is Episode 15, Segment 2. The name Coast Starlight comes from two train names from the days when Southern Pacific Railroad dominated California and much of Oregon. The Shasta Daylight Passenger Train took passengers from Portland, Oregon to San Francisco, California each day, treating passengers to fantastic views of Mount Shasta and the Shasta and Sacramento Rivers. The Coast Daylight was a train that ran on Southern Pacific's tracks right along the coast of California between San Francisco and Los Angeles. By the early 1960s, passenger rail service was dying, and it was a dying and expensive service for all American railroads. Like many railroads of that time, Southern Pacific cut out many of its passenger trains, and these trains were saved only because of the birth of Amtrak. Amtrak has been around for over 40 years now, and this book, Amtrak, An American Story, honors Amtrak and the people who worked hard to keep it going. When Amtrak celebrated its 40th birthday, this book was published to commemorate Amtrak and to honor its history. Good times and bad times are all related here with profiles of Amtrak workers and the words of some of those who kept Amtrak on track. So here are some of the images from that book, Amtrak, An American Story. You can see the Amtrak train going through the Southwest. You can see in the next image, Amtrak, this is kind of in the Northeast quarter where they use electrical uh, power directly from the lines above. In the next image that uh, is from here, in the early days of Amtrak, they used the rolling stock from the railroads they took over. So here we see two or three different railroad paint schemes represented in this Amtrak train leaving a switching yard. And now we see in the next, uh, a, a lot of the pictures in there and the stories are from people from behind the scenes. And here you see a, a dispatcher working through computers to keep those trains on time and safe. And from the next image, we see uh, a station that I got to visit. Now this was the president of Amtrak at the time and the station behind him is Union Station in Washington, D.C. The next image shows just that station and I can still remember when they fixed up that station, it had gone to, to seed, you could say, as we say in English, it had really gone downhill in terms of maintenance and then they got it really nice today. It's a very nice place to be. In the next image, we see the kind of service that you see on Amtrak. And this is, of course, in the dining car. And then in the next image, we see paint schemes from the various times of the railroad, or various eras. We see the uh, second era, the third era, and the fourth era, which is the one on the left of the screen. And in this image, we see a bunch of these routes. Now, these train names were established, like the Cardinal. You see the red bird on there? The Cardinal. These are, are names that already existed from previous railroads, which they took over. If you look at the Cardinal, for example, you see the Sunset Limited right next to it. In previous programs, we've done a whole lot on the Sunset Limited. And now we see this image, which is the people that keep you comfortable. Those are the train, the car attendants. And uh, they're just, they make all the difference in the quality of the type of experience you have taking the Amtrak train. I learned a lot from this book, and I look forward to the next 40 years of Amtrak's great service to rail passengers. Amtrak, an American story, is a great way to learn about this passenger rail service in the United States, honoring the people who have kept the trains on track and revealing the battles they've had to fight to give us the fantastic rail experiences we enjoy today. I highly recommend you spend some time with this book. And that's it for segment two. We'll be back with segment three right after this.
This is a ramping up your English book review. If you want to go back in time to the very birth of trains and railroads, you want to read the book The History of Railways by Colin Heinsen from Scholastic Books. The book's format reminds me of eyewitness books with small illustrations and ample text. English learners will find that the text is very challenging and there's a lot of text on each page. The illustrations are clear, providing the context to help readers decipher the text. Historical photos depict important events like the Golden Spike Ceremony that joined the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific Railroads as America's first intercontinental railroad. There's a great amount of information in the history of railways. Readers will stretch their English reading skills, but you'll also be re rewarded by a deeper knowledge of trains and railroads. Meanwhile, you'll be ramping up your English proficiency, especially in reading. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts.